Hello everyone, and uh, I'm actually gonna do um uh well today I'm gonna see the Revenant, and because it, the Revenant itself is a 2015 movie, um yes it released theatrically um here in Canada you know here in January but it was released in December for Oscar buzz for it to be nominated within the uh, Oscars of 2016 so therefore. Technically, of all things, it is a 2015 movie. So, with that, in, so that with that in mind, um, I'm actually going to be remaking my top 10 fair movies of the year list. And um, I'm sorry for doing that. It's just a really weird thing. But aside from that, um, so yeah, I'm going to. Um, this is not a list. This is this is just my review of the Revenant. But just to let you know, I'm going to make another video, which is going to be um, a remake of my top 10 fair movies. Of the year because this don't technically count and uh, I'll just get into this video by starting off uh, because the Revenant is in my top ten um, because this movie is thrilling as fuck it really is it's a tense insanely gr pretty grimy dirty movie that really puts you in an uncomfortable mood and really this really makes you feel awful for Leonardo DiCaprio's character and um, The Revenant is directed by Ariano Gurento Gunnensis I forgot his name who directed um, two uh, 2014's Birdman which I am one of the very few people who didn't, has not seen that movie um, for the record I don't know I haven't seen that movie, I've only seen little snippets here and there, but you gotta get um, just, this being the first movie of his that I've seen, this is a, in my opinion, a friggin' extraordinary movie, and it really is a, like I said before, it's a very dirty, grimy, realistic movie, and 100% of this movie is shot real, it's 100% outside, there's real dirt, real blood, well, not real blood, I know for sure. Um, but it's all based in, um, in, it's all shot in outside, and it's based off this story by, uh, a survivor, and, um, this character, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, essentially, it's like the post-Civil War era, and it doesn't, just it doesn't really discreetly say where it is, um, but it's shot, the movie itself is shot in my beautiful hometown of British Columbia, Canada. And uh, it's just, this is just, this is seriously one of the best looking movies I've ever seen. It's visually stunning. And that's the biggest praise I can give this film as a whole. The, the visuals, the way it's shot, the cinematography and the directing is just pitch perfect. It's really amazing. This and Macbeth are probably the two most well directed. And well, this Macbeth uh, the Martian and Ex Machina are probably the most well-directed movies of 2015, in my opinion. Um, and this, 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 the, the way it's shot is... Someone like me who's an aspiring photographer... Fucking... Seriously amazing. The, the way it's shot is excellent. And all the performances are just great. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, this just very much may be the performance that gets him the god and Oscar. <laughs> he really does deserve it. He really has a lot of 100% type of mood and power and passion of taking vengeance from Tom Hardy because um, it's not really a big spoiler because this is a part of the story as a whole. But like at some point in the movie, like he's in the war, in, in the post Civil War era with Tom Hardy and his squadron. And he has, um, he gets dragged by an inc dra by a, by an incident, not really an incident, but it's like, they were, um, Leonardo DiCaprio's character, and the son were out hunting, and he kind of gets, he gets dragged back into his position in his, in his army unit, with the squadron, really. Um, and it's like, and at some point during the movie, um, Tom, oh my god, because, like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio's character gets 
mauled by a bear, essentially, and I gotta say that scene with the bear is the most still I've ever been in a, it's like, uh, the most shocking thing I've seen, just a 20 feet, it's one of the most shocking moments I've ever seen in any film ever. The, the seeing the CG there is beyond me. I, I'm like, how the fuck do you do that? And I'm not. And I'm, this isn't a criti This isn't negative, but it's like there's a part. There's parts of that where I can tell, like the bear. Like I do know, in a sense, the bear is CG, but it's incredible the way it's done. Like he says, he, he tears them apart, like all that, and it gnaws them and throws them around. I'm like. How the hell do you do this? It's insane, and it's all done in one or two shots. Like it has an early underground and two um feel to it of that long shot feel, and it's all done in like two or three shots, long shots. And there's the, that's through the movie. It's, it isn't like Birdman where it's like two to three extremely long cuts like that. But this is like like a good twenty, thirty, or forty um, movie, movie cuts. It's not like the typical movie Halloween movie where it's like here there 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 this is like take one moment of this and draw upon it and keep the camera moving constantly for the whole time and the way they did that with the bear a CG creature in this animal that is actually like physically turned apart or however the hell you did it with Leonardo DiCaprio I was really blown away by that and um yeah that that scene is Friggin' amazing. Me and Harley Cabrio is amazing, and so is Tom Hardy in this movie. And, um, this movie just really blew my socks off. And this movie, yes, this movie is not for the pussies. <laughs> it's not, I don't mean that in a demeaning or uh, negative or sexist way. I mean, like, this is a movie for men. This is a rough, I think it's for a very dirty realism type of movie that packs a really powerful punch. Like, um, when I saw this movie, well, when I saw it today, um, the scene where they find Tom Hardy's character, like, they attack from the bear, and the bear's lying on top of him, like, they, they Leonardo DiCaprio was just able to kill it before it really killed him. They fall down somewhere, and it's like, the bear lands on top of him, and the only thing they can see is his head coming from underneath the dead bear. And I'm like, Oh my god, and like, the, his teammates come over and take off the bear off of him, and they won't talk Leonardo DiCaprio over, because you see all the marks on them, and the whole theater was like, oh, oh, me, oh my god, we're like, that's the impact of this film, it's like, it's so engrossing, and I've never seen a whole theater get this thrilled, by it. and because when this movie started, there was goddamn cheering in my theater. Mainly because I live in British Columbia, and that the uh, the Native American. I'm not kidding here. This is a real. This is real. Like you can, you can think this is fake all you want, but this is real. Like my experience of this was real. So, because I live here in British Columbia, um, where this movie was shot, and the actor of the Native American that Leonardo DiCaprio meets was in the theater. He was in the theater, with, uh, and I got to meet him, and it was so cool. And just, yeah, it's amazing. And I got to see a bunch of Native Canadians in my theater cheering this movie on. Like, the, when the movie began, there was goddamn cheering. And the moment his character was introduced, there was cheering. And everyone was really shocked when you got to see this character kind of go his way. Or end. This is, I'm not going to spoil. Um, and when the movie ended, there was still goddamn cheering. There was such a passion and a spirit and a real liveliness. It wasn't like a movie. This is a nonsense Star Wars. This was a goddamn experience. And it was mind blowing to see this real enthrallment of how passionate people can get this truly happy about the movie, even if even if one of the actors is in physical contact with you. It's like I get to meet one of the actors who was in this movie. I'm I'm not kidding there. I'm really not kidding. I'm just blown away by that. I'm a sign coming back to the movie. The movie is... This is not a drawback, but this is like... Um, the movie is wrong. 
However, I did. There was a couple moments where I felt like, okay, I was a bit bored, or uh, a couple of scenes here and there. But when it ended, I'm like, <sighs> like it kind of felt seamless because you know it's the end. But I'm like, as a whole, I'm like, I don't mind buying that and rewatching it again and again and again because I was just so engaged. And yes, it was long, but just like with Macbeth, where it, ha where it kind of did have the pro same problem I do in it, it was a bit slow and pacing weird. Pacing and the pacing was weird and, and lengthy like that. Uh, the slow moments are still really enjoyable, and unlike Ex Machina, or Bridge of Spies in my opinion, where those slow moments really, really did feel slow, and they didn't add a thing to the movie, and I just wasn't that great, where this movie was so engaging, and the slow moments were really great, it added atmosphere and tone, and a moment to react, and a moment to have a reaction from what just happened, or just a moment to breather. A, a real moment of breathing within the movie is like it's not 100% like every movie ever constructed really it's like there's moments of like a film where it just lets you breathe it breathes well and there's a lot of really calm moments and even though this movie is very tense it balances out but not in the uh, but not in a way where it disrespects this, disrespects the audience it does it in a way what it should do is like it gives you really intense moments, but it doesn't really like okay. They show the reactions to it. It's not like that. It's like they cut away to something else, but it's not as exciting. So therefore, you kind of do find that breather in that moment, and then, but then again, it's like that moment is still important and necessary to the story. It's not as intense, but it's still important, and yet it still feels really nice and calm. There's some moments like that, like. I love this scene when Leonardo DiCaprio uh, character, I, I completely forgot his name, I'm sorry <laughs> and um, the Native American character, or Native Canadian character they come across, there's a scene where they're just sitting next to a tree and they just start doing it like this because there's light snow coming they're like and it was just a funny moment and it helps bounce it all out. It, it didn't take itself completely seriously, even though it definitely did. Now, I can say that without... <laughs> like, oh, this is weird how to say it, but it's like... Um, it's very, very weird. But it's like... The, it's like a... As if all the bad corners and stuff like that that happens in the movie, and there's a lot of heavy emotional moments and love tense stuff that all that happens that one scene that one funny scene really does balance it all out and it reminds you that this movie is not just a depressing kick in the balls like some other films can be this film balances it out it balances out very very well same thing with ex machina it was a very inter inter it was a very interesting thought provoking material but then there was also that dancing in ex machina where i'm just like this is silly, but you know, it's at least taking a breather from the tone. Just, you know, just at least make it a bit more balanced out, which I think is just a great thing to do. You can't always take your film 100% seriously from beginning to end, even if it's a, in a serious matter. You gotta have comedy to break it apart, and that really did help a lot within it. And um, yeah, this the choreography, the action itself. It, this, it just like before, like I said, with the long take directing, uh, it's done very, very seamlessly, and it feels not too stupidly choreographed or anything like that. It, it feels like a real gritty U UFC fight, uh, like a bit real bar like a bare knuckle brawl with each other, and it just felt really, f really, really gr like intense, and you really felt righteous when Leonardo DiCaprio gets. Re his revenge on Tom Hardy, which leads to a great, great climax in a very, very suspenseful one, where it also has Domino Gleason as like this big sheriff. I want to say he's a sheriff, but he's like a head of attorney character, who they who Leonardo DiCaprio teams up with him in like the last act of the film, and to take down Tom Hardy's character because he essentially went kind of rogue. He's like, <laughs> um, it's just. 
this movie, I can talk about it for a, a long time, in my opinion. And I just love this film. I thought it was excellent as a whole. And, yeah. I, I, my only real problem with it is that it was very, very long. And um, there's a couple moments where I did feel a bit too bored. But it's uh, not too bored. But I would say there's the moments where it was boring. But it was for the sake of taking that breather. But then it's like, it's like, you know what, it's like, I did kind of find those things a little bit boring, but whatever is a ten technical marker, and the fact that this is, this is getting an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes is bullcrap. It should be higher, man. It should be goddamn higher. This movie is, I wouldn't really say it's a masterpiece, but I would say it's a damn freaking great, technically well-made film that I really loved from beginning to end, and yes, it is long, and yes, it beats you down hard at times, but in the end, it's just with a greater sense of the plot and story, which I can't really blame the film for that. <laughs> and in the end, um, yeah, that's just my opinions on the revenants. And yeah, this movie is freaking awesome. That's all I can say about it. It's just a thrilling. Really, really, it's a thrilling, exhausting, and intense movie. But it's also beautiful, beautifully crafted, with gorgeous cinematography, cinematography, uh, brilliant acting by everyone. Uh, <laughs> seriously, it's every, about everyone. Everyone in this movie was freaking great. Even though Will Polar uh, was a bit weird. <laughs> Because he, because it's red, I must be whatever. It's like everyone in the main cast, the side characters, they're all fantastic. And in this end, this is definitely one of my favorites of 2015. So, yeah, that's my review of the movie. Um, again, I vote my, the only things I don't like about, that I don't like about this movie are like so minute. It, it, Really doesn't really matter because I'm not I'm not gonna give this movie a, per a perfect score, but I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it a, a 91 percent. That's my rating number one. I'm gonna give uh, the Revenant a 91 percent. That's my review for this movie. I wonder if you'll enjoy it and stick around for tomorrow when I will review not review but do a remake on my top 10 favorite movies of. 2015. Uh, thank you very much everyone for watching. I will see you in the future for more videos as always. Till then.